and we're back with forevertfootballshow.com the most interactive soccer weekly recap on the internet you can watch our show as you watch the goals in the youtube playlist right on the screen we also welcome your comments feedback via email or via the chat box right on the window uh, of foreverfootballshow.com weekly sunday every week at 5 p.m. Uh, guys, now we're going to talk about the Champions League. Uh, let's start with the European one since we were already talking about the European leagues. Uh, I was very surprised with Inter Milan uh, with <laughs> beating Barcelona with such a different uh, goal differential. Yeah. 3 to 1. How did you like that game? Uh, not, not so much. Uh, being a Juve fan and being uh, an admirer of Barcelona, I, I was not too happy. But, um, you know, I mean, it was, it was at Inter. They had Mourinho probably thinking about this and, and kind of making this plan all week and I, I think Inter performed it excellently, you know, they, they really bounced back from the early goal from Barcelona and really capitalized. Yeah, and what a show for the fans. Uh, ultimately, two very strong teams playing all offense. Uh, it took a while in the first uh, 10, 20 minutes, uh, not many opportunities coming up. But the two teams play all offense with three players in front uh, and Inter, uh, I think Inter really deserved. Mourinho is a very good tactician, very, strategist, very, yes. and uh, he just found a way to sort of neutralize the phenomenal Messi yeah. and <laughs> come, on, come on top. Yeah, but, uh, you know, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't discount Barcelona whatsoever, you know. Uh, excellent coach as well he showed last year and showed so far this year and uh, Barcelona are strong at home you know and uh, it's phenomenal as we've all seen and uh, you know, and that goes two, two goals and, uh, and they'll be three exactly. so a two new win is, is well within their that's absolutely the case that goal that Barcelona scored in Italy might have done might have been the thing Meanwhile, the other lag, which you know, supposedly people are not paying that much attention because you know all the attention was in Inter and Barcelona, but we had a, a strong match between Bayern and Lyon. Do you think that they are just deciding who's going to be the second of Europe, or whoever wins this lag has a shot at the title? You know, um, kind of what we've seen so far is you never know. Um, you know, Bayern. Though they, they haven't been at their strongest this year, most people would say, but uh, you know they, they've kept pushing through in the Champions League, and Robin right now has played fantastically for him. You know, as you see here again, he was the one with the lone goal, and you know I, I wouldn't discount them from uh, really coming through with a push. You know, it's it's a it's a single leg final, so you know it's it's really anybody's game. Absolutely. Both Lyon and Bayern eliminated important teams. Lyon had eliminated uh, Real Madrid, uh, Bayern eliminated Manchester, so they come with credentials as well. And uh, in the beginning of the season, I thought uh, Ribéry was going to be the big name in, the, in Bayern, but Robin also stepping up and the yeah. team is playing. He's actually very, stayed healthy. Very balanced team. Yeah. Uh, so with that, uh, we'll wait uh, this middle of this week. Next week, we'll be back commenting on the results of the UEFA Champions League. Meanwhile, uh, also during this week, we're going to have the final and last round of the CONCACAF Champions League, a tournament that will start to call a lot of attention for us Sounders fans because we're also going to play that tournament this year. Uh, we had an all-Mexican semi-final and obviously for that matter, uh, all-Mexican final, Cruz Azul versus Pachuca. Cruz Azul won the first round. Pachuca, who had been the strongest team last year, now has a chance to close at home. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, and again, it comes down to away goals, you know. Uh, Pachuca has got has got the one vital away, so all they need is a one nil win. You know, so it puts uh, it actually puts the pressure on Cruz Azul, I'd say. Absolutely. Cruz Azul had been playing much stronger at home and just in the previous round had beat 5-1 in the semi-5-0. 5-1 uh, in aggregate against Pumas. Um, and I think they, they wasted a chance to open a bigger goal differential uh, at home. Now the interesting thing is that uh, the Mexican teams send teams not only to the CONCACAF Champions League, but they also send teams to play the Libertadores, the South American ch mm -hmm. Championship. And as dominant as they are in the CONCACAF Champions League, they actually don't accomplish much in the South American Championship. Uh, although this year they actually did send two teams 
to the uh, knockoff rounds, and uh, just that's because of last year, last year in the Libertadores, two teams uh, had made to the qualification rounds, but because of the swine flu, they were uh, they they were not allowed to continue playing. They couldn't host. They couldn't host their home teams in Mexico. They didn't want to host anywhere else. It became a big impasse and they stopped their qualification. They were brought back and actually this time around brought back all the way to the uh, uh, quarterfinals, which is, I think, the, if I recall correctly, the best uh, competition yeah, of Mexican teams in the Nothing to be ashamed of. Yeah. Uh, the other two teams, Morelia, uh, did get uh, disqualified in the first rounds. But what, what's calling attention of Libertadores in America this this season is that Corinthians, who filled my team, who finished first uh, as a top seed for the knockoff rounds, is actually playing Flamengo, who's supposed to be a strong team, but actually, you know, with a few mistakes, ended up qualifying last. And just in the next round, they already have playing Corinthians and Flamengo, the two biggest uh, crowds and fans, uh, supporters in Brazil, the two biggest teams in Brazil. And with Ronaldo Fenomeno playing against Adriano, Imper the Emperor. So two of the greatest scorers of Brazil in the last two World Cups, two of the great players of Inter Milan, and now playing face-to-face -face in Copa Libertadores. So stay tuned, uh, Copa Libertadores will go a little bit beyond, actually the final is only going to be after the World Cup. We're going to be talking now that they, they are in the quarter-final rounds, we'll be covering a little bit more about the Libertadores in America as well. All right. It'll be exciting. Oh, very exciting and emotional for me as yes, well. Yes, most definitely. So folks, this was uh, another show with ForeverFootballShow.com. We broadcast live every Sunday, 5 o'clock, from Georgian Dragon in Seattle. We'll see you next week with our first live official Forever Football Show. And, uh, and first, I think, I think we're going to gonna show the uh, Hoist the Cup moment of the week. Over the weekend. That's it. Yep. Nice.